Well, good evening, Central Georgia. It was no secret today that it was really hot and it's been hot for the past couple of days. Unfortunately, we'll get even hotter over the next couple of days and tomorrow is going to be probably the hottest day so far this year as we're forecasting triple digits and we have an extreme heat warning for some counties here in Central Georgia. So that's why we have a weather impact alert. Let's take a look at the reasons why. The reasons why is because of dangerous heat index values. It's, uh, it's very common, of course, in Central Georgia to have high humidity all throughout the summer months. So when you pair that with the high actual temperatures, we're going to have high feels like temperatures as well. So feels like temperatures in some spots could be well over 110 degrees. And then, of course, we're forecasting our first triple digit day in terms of actual temperatures of the year, especially for Macon. So the National Weather Service has issued an extreme heat warning for some counties here in central Georgia. So let's take a look at the sky cam here in Macon. It's been a pleasant day and actually we're having a great sunset so far. I might turn the camera around just to show you that sunset. Great stuff in downtown Macon. 86 degrees is the current number. Feels like 92. Still really warm at this time of day. And today was sizzling hot. Our afternoon highs reached 99 degrees at the Macon Airport, just one degree shy of triple digits, uh, which would have been a record and we would have broken that record set in 1940. We're expected to be a little warmer tomorrow. So that scorching hot weather that we experience today, it's going to get a little bit um, worse as we get to, into tomorrow. Triple digits is, is expected. Hottest day is expected. Hottest temperatures are expected uh, sorry, hotter temperatures are expected tomorrow, which will make it some of the hottest weather that we we'll experienced so far this year. And the upper 90s should continue until Tuesday. Thankfully, on Wednesday, we should cool down slightly to the mid 90s and the mid 90s should continue for the rest of the work week. We do have some good news, especially for the next weekend. We're expecting a wedge to settle in that could bring cooler weather, especially for our most northern counties counties north of I-16. But because of the hot weather that we're experiencing tomorrow, the National Weather Service has issued an extreme heat warning for our eastern counties. So counties such as Putnam, Baldwin, Wilkinson, Lawrence, Wheeler, Montgomery, Trutland, Johnson, Washington, and Hancock County are within an extreme heat warning. The rest of central Georgia are still within a heat advisory. So what's the difference between a heat warning and a heat advisory. It all depends on the certainty and the expected feels like temperatures. So the counties that I just listed that were shaded in pink, the counties that are within an extreme heat warning, they have an 80% chance of having feels like temperatures either reaching or going over 110 degrees. And the other spots that are within the heat advisory, so the places more towards the west, are expected to have feels like temperatures reaching 105 or going over 105 degrees in terms of feels like temperature. So the certainty is extremely high and that's why the National Weather Service pulled the trigger and issued an extreme heat warning for the eastern counties. But all in all, it really doesn't matter if you're within an extreme heat warning or a heat advisory. We're just still going to be extremely hot, so it's going to be important to stay hydrated just like you did today, hopefully. Now, I mentioned that there, there is some good news, especially for the long term. It looks like a front is going to come in, and that's going to bring cooler weather for next weekend. Could potentially see highs into the upper 80s. Uh, we could be wedged in. So the wedges that we've had in February or in, in the springtime where we have a lot cooler stuff towards the north, warmer stuff down to the south, we could see some temperature differences uh, for next week. So we're expected to be near normal or below normal uh, for the period at the start of August. So we're expecting extremely high feels like temperatures and high temperatures overall tomorrow and for Tuesday. So it's best to look over the details over heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Those are two of the most common heat illnesses related to high temperatures. Heat exhaustion, uh, this is when you sweat so much that you're losing too much water and salt and you just become sick. So with this, you should be treated immediately. Uh, it's not as extreme as, an, as a heat stroke, 
but still is very important to get excess clothing out. Actually, it's also very important to dress in lighter colors because darker colors absorb heat easier than if you're wearing lighter colors. So that's very important. And if you see any symptoms of heat exhaustion as well, seek medical attention. Heat stroke is way worse. That's when your body can no longer cool itself. Uh, so that's when you probably need to go to the hospital or get into an ice bath. Uh, just try to be in an environment that will allow you to cool off uh, as immediate as possible. So the signs of heat illness, uh, heat exhaustion, as I mentioned, not as bad as a heat stroke. Still, you're feeling faint or dizzy. You're sweating a lot. You're becoming a little cool and you may be becoming a little bit more weak and getting some cramps. That's a heat exhaustion. Heat stroke, that's the most immediate urgent thing. A throbbing headache. You're not even sweating at that point and you're having some really strong heart palpitations and you may be coming in and out of consciousness. If you see any of those symptoms tomorrow or Tuesday, please go immediately towards the emergency room. So once again, here is the recap of the weather impact alert. This is for tomorrow. Heat index values in sunspots, especially the eastern counties uh, within a extreme heat warning, they could have heat index values up to 112 degrees. So what's the need? Limit time outdoors. I know a lot of people, uh, this is not really possible. Maybe your job is in construction or maybe this is, um, it's necessary to be outdoors. Just if, it, if you really need to be outdoors tomorrow, just like today, take a lot of breaks in the shade and please, please, please hydrate and also take advantage of any nearby air conditioning systems. All right, so here's a look at the satellite and radar. It is clear and it's been clear all throughout today. Now, in terms of the weather, in terms of rain chances, the good thing is our rain chances are increasing, which is so necessary because I don't know, I think this was last Monday, last Tuesday when we had a, a bout of high temperatures, but we had some widespread storms coming in. I don't know if you remember, but we had some storms moving into Macon, Mortar Robins, and I'll tell you, the atmosphere was absolutely pleasant. Uh, the atmosphere cooled down to the upper 80s. It felt really great. So we really need some high rain chances to cool us down. I'd say tomorrow we'll have isolated showers, but we'll have an uptick in activity by the late night hours. That's where we could see potentially uh, more coverage in terms of storms or showers. Tuesday we have an even higher rain chance getting back to that summertime pattern, pop-up showers and storms, and then potentially widespread activity by the evening. So the future view shows seven, eight o'clock could be showing a good amount of coverage of storms and rain for the southern counties. Uh, so that'll be good to cool on down during that time period. And then Wednesday getting back into that pattern. Um, once again, scattered thunderstorms and showers, and we're hoping that we'll have some outflow boundaries throughout the day. And outflow boundary is sort of like an unofficial boundary where storms come together and they potentially create some widespread activity. That will be really necessary, especially to cool on down the atmosphere. So moderate rain chances will continue throughout the rest of the week. And then we're expecting a frontal boundary to arrive, and that could potentially bring some cooler weather uh, for the long term. So here's a look at the seven day forecast. Weather impact alert, that's for tomorrow. We could potentially have our first triple digit day tomorrow. And then it feels like temperatures in some spots could go over 110 degrees. High temperatures continue on Tuesday. Our rain chances also increase during that time. So hopefully you'll see a shower or a storm. That would be really good. Temperatures start to cool off slightly on Wednesday. We'll go back to the mid 90s. And then next weekend, that's when we should go to below average numbers. And some models are saying upper 80s. I think this will be all due to a wedge that will be that will be in place. That will set in some cooler weather for our most northern counties and some warmer stuff for our most southern counties. So I'm going to take this time to answer any questions. All right. W. Rose Watson, please tell people to put water in glass or plastic. Yes, okay, yes, you are, you're correct. Animals, uh, they're a very vulnerable group, especially with these high temperatures, uh, especially with the concrete. Please limit 
any time outdoors, especially walking your furry friends, because the concrete gets exponentially hotter uh, and it can be very, very uncomfortable for your pets, especially your dogs or cats. So yes, we don't want any burned paws. Uh, and please don't leave your pets outside as well. Uh, make sure they're on the grass or at least make sure that they spend most of their time indoors uh, under an air conditioning system. So yeah, we have to take care of ourselves and we also have to take care of our furry friends and, and pets. That'll be really necessary. And I'm also going to show the weather alerts once again. This is for tomorrow. I'm going to recap the counties within an extreme heat warning. The reason why places such as Macon, Warner Robins, they're not under a, a extreme heat warning is because the National Weather Service has more certainty that the counties shaded in red will have higher feels like temperatures. But there is a chance that maybe uh, there'll be an extension in terms of the extreme heat warning. So places such as Macon and Warner Robins will be added towards uh, extreme heat warning. Uh, strays as well. Yeah, strays, stray dogs, stray animals. Uh, it will also be important for them to, to be protected. Um, so hopefully if anyone from an animal shelter, if they're watching, um, it'll be very important to, to protect them as well. So good, good comment, W. Rose Watson. So once again, the counties under an extreme heat warning, Putnam, Baldwin, Wilkinson, Lawrence, Wheeler, Montgomery, Trutland, Johnson, Washington, and Hancock County. So these are the places that have a higher chance of seeing feels like temperatures reaching 110 degrees or going over that number. And uh, I'm just going to go back towards this graphic once again. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. We just have to deal with this heat for two more days. So tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be the worst out of all the days within this heat wave. Tuesday is going to be the last day of extreme heat, upper 90s. And then Wednesday, that's when we should return to average. Uh, Randy Walker, how long should you stay outside? Uh, there's no official number in which um, you should be outside. It's just, it's all relative. It's just, it's best to stay indoors as much as possible tomorrow. Uh, everyone's body is different in terms of heat illness. Some people can withstand the heat longer than others. But just to be safe, just try to limit time outdoors and just be as close to an air conditioning system um, for as long as possible. And once again, here are the signs of heat illness. So heat exhaustion, not as bad as, bad as a heat stroke. If you have heat exhaustion, you don't need to go to the hospital. Uh, this is the illness where you can really deal with the symptoms by yourself. So you can go in inside, cool on down, drink plenty of water. It's really a, a warning system before a heat stroke. So once again, if you're faint, dizzy, if you're sweating a lot, uh, and if you have really, really um, high amounts of heart palpitations, muscle cramps, that's probably the telltale sign that you need to go indoors. Once you have a heat stroke, that's when it's best to, to go to the hospital as quick as possible. All righty. So that's everything that you should know for tomorrow and for the next couple of days. Once again, it was hot today. Just know that tomorrow is going to be a couple of degrees hotter. So just take the, pre uh, the preparations uh, to really deal with this heat. Please stay indoors as much as possible and limit your time outside. So once again, I'll be back for our 13 WBZ 11 o'clock show with more details. And hopefully you have a great week ahead. Thank you very much.